Before you get into the real estate market, get clarity, perspective, and the information you need. I've been listening to you and I love your show. Right here with broker owner Dan Jemis, host of the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show. Okay, welcome back everyone. 1235 here on AM 800. I am Dan Jemis. Matt Alita in studio with me today. Hello. Uh, lots of great uh, comments from uh, those listening with their the fads. Trends. What was tra- What was trendy? What were the fads when you were young? And uh, some responses still kicking in. Before we get to those though, we've got our good friend Chris Gibb with Gibb Insurance Brokers on the phone. Hey Chris, how are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you guys? We're fantastic. Now, you've got a couple years on us. What was trendy and what were the fads when you were younger? You know, I, uh, before I tell you that, I, I, I heard Matt <laughs> say he was born in 88. And yes. I'm sitting here thinking, I graduated high school in 1988, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you really are aging yourself there, Chris. I am very old. I, uh, you know, the, the, the life changing toy that uh, that came out for uh, for my generation was the Atari 2600 yes. uh, video nice. game system. Yeah. You, know, you know, the uh with asteroids and um oh what was the other one there they Pong? there was there was yes uh uh Donkey Kong or all Donkey those Kong, things. yes. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Now Chris, there I'm a little a bit game. younger than you are. I'm 41, uh but I also had an Atari, so it was used when I got it, but I loved it. Loved it, loved oh, it, loved it. It was it was it was uh, life changing for everybody. It was you know you look back <laughs> now at the graphics and you're like oh my god those are horrible compared to the games you can play on your bloody yeah. phone now. I know it's true, it's true. But uh, there you go. So that's awesome. Some more responses that came in from the break uh, were Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got uh, Benetton Fashion Wear, Swatch Watch. Um, yeah, Alf from the show. I love that. I love the show, Alf. It was a great show. <laughs> so there you go. So some great trends. Keep them coming, folks. We'll uh, we'll keep sharing them live on the air. Send them uh, to us by text ten eight hundred. Now, Chris, our discussion today is uh, all about what topic? Uh, you know what? With with spring in the air and uh, talking about kids' toys, I thought <laughs> it would be a good idea to uh, to bring up again people's coverage for sewer backup and yes. flooding in their basements. We're in that season for sure. It's, yeah, the season is coming. Windsor and Essex County just got dumped on there this week, earlier this week. So I think it's it's with uh, with April showers bring uh, flooded basements. So we now, should... One thing to mention, uh, Chris, I know a few people that live in Harrow that were uh, part of that massive flood that happened last year, and some of them are still dealing with oh. uh, with renovations. It's kind of it's it's pretty uh, pretty horrible. But it was that was a bad oh, one last year, wasn't it? It was horrible. We you know south southern Amherstburg, Harrow, and Kingsville just got inundated, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. One of the big lessons we always, you know, I've been doing this for almost 30 years. Every time this happens, one of the big lessons I I learn is nobody looks at their insurance policy to see how much coverage they have. Yes, true. You know, we we all just keep renewing and whatever. We all look at the the price and roll our eyes and and, and gnash our teeth, but (laughs) you have to know how much coverage do you have. You know, do you, do you have enough if your basement was to flood, or do you have too much? Are you paying for something you don't need? So it's it's extremely important you look at that paperwork or call your insurance professional and find out before you go downstairs and see six inches of water, mm-hmm. how much coverage do I have? You know, how often has it happened? We we just had someone over the past a couple of weeks, because as people know, uh, Nikki Nikki's parents, their house burnt down to the ground uh, last year. Uh, we personally know... Uh, three or four people who had house fires, like big destroying house fires, uh, mm-hmm. you know, over the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all the flooding, we've had so much. And how often do people say it's not until those big scenarios happen to someone they know that they think, you know what, I'm going to look at my, my policy a bit closer, right? Yeah. So it's, exactly. you don't have to be too late. Exactly. Because once, once the water's in there, it's way too late. So you sure. need to know how much coverage. And I'll put it to the, to the two of you. Do you too, Matt and and Dan? Do you know how much coverage you have for sewer backup and flooding in your basement? Now I do because I've got Chris Gibb as my insurance broker, and we talk about it all the time. So <laughs> I personally do. Matt, well, how about you? Well, I I 
don't know the exact amount. I know that I have the coverage because, again, I also have Chris Gibb as my <laughs> insurance guy. Um, but no, I, I remember being in the situation before where we had some some water issues. Um, and at one point in time, the whatever company we were with, because we had a couple claims due to some things that weren't our fault, yes. we ended up having to switch um, who we were with and, and for a time did not have that particular water coverage. And then later on, we were able to, to get that and make sure that we were nice and protected because that can be again, especially in our area, yeah. it can be a very big thing to have to deal with. Oh, exactly. And and that's what you, you know, uh, over and above having the coverage, it's also being proactive and saying, you know, how old is my sump pump? Have I have I gone down and checked it to see if it, if it actually works? That happened at my house one time. I was, I was in the crawl space and uh, I noticed it was really humid and warm. And then I realized the sump pump was just running and running and running. And yes, it wasn't it wasn't actually pushing the water out. So Interesting. thankfully, I noticed and got it replaced this ba- this past year uh, with one of those big, you know, I, I, it may have been the same uh, weather as the Harrow uh, big flood, but our sump pump pump broke uh, okay. and the backup. We have a water backup also broke oh wow so we caught it in time there was no damage in the basement but uh, it could have been really bad had we had an issue uh, luckily ours is uh, is monitored we have our sump pump monitored through the alarm system so you have a water and earth. so the, the the company called us to say the alarm was going off and that's how that's we good. caught it uh but both the main pump and the backup uh there was so much water coming in that the backup actually the, the plumber said the backup actually snapped like the, the wow. little mechanism on it snapped because it was so much water wow coming in so uh, yeah, it just goes to show you, you have to really kind of keep an eye on it. Yep. Yep. It's one of those things that, uh, you don't need it until you need it. So you should, I always, I always tease everybody at, you know, well, I shouldn't say tease, but every quarter go down and just run your sump pump to see if sure. it's working, check it out. And, uh, and hopefully it'll be there when you need it. Now, Chris, let's speak on the comment that Matt made just a second ago. Uh, assuming you do have, um, an issue at your home. So a flood or some kind of claim. Uh, let's talk about what happens following that claim with your coverage. Is there typically, uh, if you have a flood in the basement, will that insurance company keep, um, keep you insured or will they suggest that you, you go somewhere else? How, how would that uh, usually work? That, um, it, that's an interesting question because there's, there's two factors at play. So is it's, it's, you know, for your individual characteristics, will, will they keep the coverage or not? And also it depends on the, the area that you live. Mm-hmm. Um, insurance companies will have typically three to five different zones for, for flooding and sewer backup. So if you have a claim and you live in a high-risk zone, they very, very likely will at the next renewal say, sorry, we can't offer this coverage anymore. But if you live in an area that's considered low-risk, they may say, okay, this was a one-off and the odds of having another one are pretty low, so we'll continue the coverage. Yeah, install but, a backup or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or that's what they might say. is say, okay, you, you've had this claim. What have you done to mitigate the chance of having another one in the future? Mm-hmm. Sure. So it's, okay. And that's why it's, it's important to know, and it's important to shop around. You know, different companies look at it differently, and for some people – you know they're they're willing to pay the extra to have that uh, to have that coverage. I, I for me, my basement's completely finished, and I am essentially useless when it comes to home improvement repairs. So <laughs> I I always have to have that coverage because I have to hire someone who doesn't have all thumbs to come and replace <laughs> the flooring and. No, no doubt. Like, I mean, it's, it's, but this is also goes to show the importance of maybe working with a broker, right? That can shop you around. Exactly. That's, that's one of the most important things about dealing with an insurance broker is if that insurance company changes the, 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 uh, the parameters of your policy, or if your life changes where you, you buy a house that you need the coverage, when you deal with an insurance broker, they can shop it around to different companies and you're still dealing with the same person that you've gotten to, mm-hmm. to know and to trust. Now, Chris, are there areas in Windsor, Essex, where the insurance companies just will not cover um, flooding? Um, well, I guess I would, I would start with saying Windsor and Essex County 
are generally at the top of all the insurance companies' lists for uh, for a uh, an area that they're not excited about uh, our coverage for sewer backup. We're we're pancake flat, so there's uh, it's any water that has to be moved usually has to be pumped out. So the whole region is is uh, is suspect when it comes to insurance companies. But yes, there are there are areas, especially near the shoreline, where uh, it's more risky than than other areas. Um, you know, some places like McGregor, where or when you're you're you know you're right in the the flat pancake of Essex County, it's very difficult to pump the water out. So those areas tend to get a little bit higher rates or or more restrictive coverage. Now, Chris, a listener just texted. Uh, just to, uh, can you ask Chris how do you know if you're in a high risk area? So is there a map that someone can see somewhere? Or how how do they know? I do that. To- reach out to uh to you or to an insurance broker uh, i would say that yeah the, the best way is to reach out to your insurance broker and you can ask because every company um is different in in what they consider high medium and low risk so it's uh, it's sort of a moving target but you know quick call to your insurance broker and they should be able to look it up and and give you an idea of uh of your territory it would obviously go by address by postal code etc i'm sure that that close yeah right? yeah it yeah. goes by your postal code Okay, interesting. We'll hope that uh, that answers the question for our listener there. Anything else uh, happening in the world of insurance, Chris, that you want to mention before we let you go? No, no. The world of insurance is just uh, is just bopping along. You know, there's <laughs> we've got challenges right now with high theft vehicles. People are seeing uh, surcharges on their insurance or auto insurance if they have a a high risk uh, theft vehicle. So. We're, we're talking to people about installing uh, TAG systems, which is a, a theft prevention and recovery system. On the home insurance side, it's the same, the same problem we're always having. The weather's getting worse and the cost of repairs is going up. So, you know, when you get that insurance renewal and it, uh, it knocks you back on your heels, make sure you pick up the phone and call Gibb Insurance. Uh, Chris, before I let you go, I have one more question. It just came in via text. A uh, question from Mr. Gibb. Did insurance companies recently change their rules about old furnace inspections and what is acceptable for old furnaces? Is it 30 plus years? Uh, generally, the rule of, there hasn't been any changes, but the general rule of thumb is once your furnace gets to be 30 years or older, they're going, if, if you're not interested in changing it, you will most likely have to get a uh, heating and cooling professional to come in and, uh, give it a, a once over and get a, a clean bill of health for it. But that's the general rule of thumb is once your heating system gets in and around the 30 years of age, uh, they're going to start looking at it a little more carefully. Okay. Awesome. Now, Chris, before I let you go, I always ask as deputy mayor to the town of Amherstburg, uh, what's happening uh, municipally, anything exciting going on uh, council meeting uh, coming up, I think in a couple of weeks or the 25th, maybe in a week or so, anything, uh, anything yep. exciting happening in town? Well, there's always exciting things happening in Amherstburg. I mean, it's it's the place to be when you're when you're talking Windsor and Essex County. You know that. You guys know. Yeah. Um, you know, some things we're going to be talking at uh, March 25th uh, council meeting. We're going to be uh, talking about changes and improvements to Amherstburg's uh, community investment program. Okay. Um, the the town of Amherstburg recently enacted a, a community investment community improvement plan where we can offer incentives to uh, investors and employers to bring jobs to the community uh, to to you know it, this is a way to to spur investment because we really want to start building up our industrial base and bringing those uh, high paying well paying jobs to the community Fantastic. Lots coming up. It's, uh, it's great, Chris. Uh, listen, as always, thank you for coming on with us. We'll talk again in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you know what? I think I'm going to get off the phone and go on eBay and see if I can <laughs> buy an Atari 2600. Hey, I'm sure you can find them. It probably won't be cheap, I would have to guess, but I'm sure they're there somewhere. All right, Chris. Uh, Chris Gibb, uh, Deputy Mayor of Amherstburg and owner of Chris uh, of Gibb Insurance Brokers. Always great to have you on with us, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. All right. All the best, gentlemen. Have Thanks, a great Chris. weekend. See you, Chris. Thank you. We're going to come back with uh, from break. We're going to give away the Richmond Popcorn Company gift card. You can still sneak in there and uh, have a chance to win by texting the keyword SNACK, S-N-A-C-K, SNACK, with your first and last name to 10-800. Then Matt is going to press on the screen and see who wins right after the break right here on the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show.